First place, Pendulum Edition deck before coming up right now. I do have a sore throat, guys, so stick with me and let's go. I finished 10 0 at the OCS, which is a regional level tournament with Pure Magicians. Let's get it. I'm going to show you guys the deck profile right now in depth, everything in depth, so you guys know exactly how to clap up your opponents. Let's get it. But before we do, make sure to smash the subscribe button and let's get it. First things first, three Joker. I was debating playing Joker or the right of Hermes here package, but having access to harmonizing is way too good, so you do need to play it. Three Joker and three Wisdom. This is like the main uh, part of the deck. Obviously, you need to open one of these uh, 12 that I'm about to show you right now. So... Out of these six, okay, then you have three pen call, three alliance. So these 12, this is basically, these are the starters of your deck, okay? Opening one of these 12, or now this is not, I did not use Pot of Prosperity in the tournament because I did not have it. So I actually went 10-0 with literally a less than full power pen mag magician deck, but add three Prosperities if you have them. So with three Prosperities, this is 15, okay? You have 15 starters or 40 to get it. Simply because I do not own Pot of Prosperities, I will not be using Pot of Prosperity in this deck list, but you could have 15 starters or 12 over here. Harmonizing is somewhat a starter because Harmonizing is the main card you want to Pendulum Summon, and as long as you have access to this, you still have it. And these are the semi-starters I'm about to show you. You always want your low scale to be Oath Dragon and your high scale to be Double Iris, okay? These are always what you want. You always want to Pendulum Summon a Harmonizing. If you could Pendulum one Harmonizing Magician, at least a DPE Scythe with one card, just with one card alone. So it's very important to scale Oath, scale Iris, because that's DPE Scythe Pen Graph with just Pendulum Summoning one har Harmonizing. So you have to play triple Oath Dragon for that reason and triple Double Iris for that reason. You don't want any other card in your scale. You don't want any other card anywhere except for the Oath Dragon and the Double Iris. You want those to be your scales uh, no matter what. So every other scale that you play is basically a one of. Uh, so the one of scales we play is one Celestial at the tournament. I played three, but I would prefer to play Prosperity. I played one. I played three Performed by Pendulum Sorcerer at the tournament. I would advise just to play one. And I played three Purple Poison at the tournament, but I would advise just to play one. These were some stuff I was testing, playing three of each. But I do think just one of each is, is ideal. I ended up siding out the other two every single time. But having access to one of each of these is important. With Duelist Alliance, if you want to play around Droll, if you see Droll earlier in the duel, you search for Sorak over Pen Call and it does come up. And also, other one ofs is I play one White Wing Magician. Uh, sometimes you want access to another tuner. This allows you to play around Flunder a lot more by having a Wind Spellcaster. Uh, but the Pendulum Summon to kill over Barrier Statue. And another card I'm playing is one Janky Magician. I did not play Janky Magician in the tournament, but I do advise, I do think it's the best way to play just one of these because this negates Lubelion. So even on scenarios where, let's say, they stop the Scythe Lock, you still have a Janky Magician to stop Lubelion. And uh, that does actually come up a lot. So it, 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 they don't really know what it does. And even if your opponent knows what Janky Magician does and they go for Albion, Typically, it's not what they actually want to do, and Lubelion uh, will not allow them to get the Desperate Tragedy Search. Also, one Magician Souls. I did not play Souls during the tournament, but uh, this I do think Souls is absolutely insane. I did want to switch up the list a little bit because I want to tell you guys what I think is the most opportune way. I did not own Prosperity, so I had to switch up the list a little bit. But the list I'm showing you right now is the opportune way. Uh, this is 43 cards, but I would make it 40 with Prosperity. The cards I would remove if you're putting in Prosperity is one Magician Souls, one Janky, and one White Wing. This would make it an exact 40 cards. But I do not own it, so these are the three that I'm going to use for this scenario. Uh, next, something else that I do highly advise that you play is three Chronograph Sorcerer and one Time Gazer. The reason why is uh, the, this deck destroys Despia, okay? So you want your Despia matchup to be even easier, okay? The best way to do that is to make it so Guardian Chimera cannot pop your scales. If Guardian Chimera pops your monsters, you literally just don't care. So the idea of Chronograph is you special out Time Gazer, you put up scales and try and bait your opponent into popping them. If your opponent does not pop them and they actually know what Time Gazer does, that's fine. They pass test number one of the Pen God, then you move to the next test. The next test is the Charmer test. So you look at their graveyard and check light or dark. Time Gazer could turn into either dark or Lina because you play Artemis Magician, which makes every single Pendulum in your deck able to go second to go into dark or Lina of your choice. Uh, to force interruptions or even to enter battle phase and crash and search wisdom line. So going second, you're literally always able to combo no matter what. And Chronograph going second with all the cards like Double Iris and Pearl Poison that destroy themselves in the scale and Wisdom Mind Magician is very easy to break boards with. So in this deck, Chronograph does come up. 
and being able to make a link to needle fiber uh, nibiru is no longer in the format so being able to go into a link to before the pen summon is vital you could clear so many boards with it so i didn't play in the tournament but i did miss it a lot in the tournament what i ended up playing i'm going to just show you guys right now just so you guys are aware is instead of the prosperity and instead of all the cards i mentioned i was playing double of these like i said and one dragon pit magician the only reason I played three Pearl Poison and one Dragon Pit in the tournament was because I, I know Ryan Yu was there, and out of respect, I knew he was playing Eldritch, and I thought I was going to see him in the finals or guaranteed in top cut. So I played this to have more outs to his Eldritch deck, but now that it's just like a normal tournament, I would advise just not play these. Just one of each is honestly all you need, and being able to clear boards is more important. Next, you play two Tony Magician. You have to play two in case you hard draw one. So that's why two is good. Post side deck, you do side out one for a Veiler. The, basically, the whole side deck is all hand traps. I'll explain the siding pattern at the very end. But guys, I literally went 10-0 with a shittier version of the list I'm showing you right now. This is basically the Super Saiyan uh, God version of Pen Magician. This is the perfect version, considering you had it. But this is with the Prosperities. Uh, one Celestial, one Dasher, one Scythe. Now, before all you absolute incels be like, Oh my god, bro, it's not Pen Magician. It's a DP Scythe deck, bro. Literally, just stop. Just stop. This I was playing DP Scythe before DP. I was playing Scythe before DP was even out in this deck, and this deck synergizes with Scythe so incredibly well, and with DP incredibly well because it's able it allows you to pop your double liars for free, and you're able to dodge every way that Scythe uh, they stop Scythe. You're able to dodge pen graph. Uh, sorry, you're able to dodge uh, chalice or droplets with the pen graph, and you always set up a Baron to protect everything to stop stuff like Ghost Spell or DD Crow on the Scythe. So this is just the best possible DP Scythe deck to play. But going second, I actually side up uh, the DP package a lot because non-ironically, any random six pendulum cards that you draw, you end up just breaking any single board. So against Despia, I actually side out all three of these. I side out Fusion Destiny as well. There's five cards and I side out some other stuff, one Tuning Magician, and I'll mention some other, basically every one of in the deck. Uh, all the three of are mandatory. So you basically remove all those for a bunch of hand traps that's just stop them. And any combination of like four pendulum cards, once they're stopped, just stops them. Uh, then two Fusion Destiny, and then one Star Pen Graph, and one Time Pen Graph. These are by far the MVPs of the deck. Uh, I can't stress enough how good these Pen Graphs are. And it, uh, the way the deck is, a pure version of the deck, uh, with uh, 20, 30 plus Magicians, both these Pen Graphs put in serious work. And it's also why you're actually required to play Fusion Destiny, because sometimes it is difficult for you to pop your Double Iris going first, because Double Iris obviously could pop itself going second, but going first, being able to have a fallback plan in Verte or Fusion Destiny to pop your own Double Iris to search the pen graph is so vital, I can't even begin to explain. Uh, there's a lot of tricks under Pen Call where you can't pop your Double Iris, which I'll explain later or in future videos or maybe on Patreon. So you're gonna go sign up on Patreon, I'll, I'll show the a bunch of combos with how to search Double Iris. There's a lot of basic combos that you need to know with this deck. And uh, to make it so even under Pen Call, you still search pen graph. Uh, that is the main deck. Now I'm gonna show you guys the extra deck. Extra deck's absolutely insane. One Artemis, and I it said one of each Charmer. These are literally MVPs going second. I can't stress enough how good they are. Uh, being able to have any of the of your Magicians go into light or dark is so vital. It's crazy. And Artemis is part of the combo, which I'll show on. I'll show the main combo here, uh, not just on Patreon, but on Patreon I'll show like more other combos. But I'll show the main combo here later in the video with Artemis Magician is very important in. Then you got the one Dagda, the one Verte, very important. One Needle Fiber, one Selene, one Access Code. This is obviously for going second. Uh, prosperity, I'll tell you guys what Prosperity banishes at the very end, but uh, it this is basically your do, be all end all going second. But if Pen Call discarded a monster, you don't really need Needle, needle Fiber. So these are basically other ways to get into the Selene Access Code going second. And you basically figure out which is the best to bait the opponent. So you'll go into one of these three first that you don't care about. So let's say you go into Needle Fiber because it'll give you Twinning Magician for free. Then you go into Selene. Then you go into Access Code. They're absolutely forced to stop it. No problem. Special Tuning. Go into Dark. Dark, Special their DP. Like it just keeps going and going and going. And you can just clear interruption so easily. The main reason we play Chronograph as well is that it gives you free access to Appaloosa. If you go Chronograph and summon any single tuner, which you have a bunch of, with Pen Call, Dual Salines, all ways to search it, you just go Needle Fiber, Selene, uh, Appaloosa before the pen summon and then underneath that below zone, you pendulum two to three monsters plus harmonizing from your hand and some other stuff and typically that does lead to apoloza baron dp with scythe set so this is a typical board with scythe and pen graph set uh but it happens only when you're playing chronograph to have more you because it was only six extenders but i'll show you how to play around the bureau uh, with making baron the fifth summon 
Needle fiber is a big part of the deck as well. So you always keep needle fiber as a backup. Uh, let's say you go needle fiber, you send some other stuff out. Keep, uh, needle fiber, try and summon Verte under needle fiber. If they hand trap the Verte, who cares? Because you're going to have scythe set. So needle fiber could special TG Winder to pop the scythe to make Baron, even when they thought they stopped you through double hand trap, which they never do. And then you got the one DP, and then the one Baguska, one Time Star, one Zeus. All right, Baguska, the only is one of the biggest reasons you want to play this deck. Despia has no answer to Baguska. Sword Soul has no answer to Baguska. Flunder has no answer to Baguska. These are three of the most played decks, and it just destroys the deck. So I do highly advise to play Baguska. Going second against Despia, the plan strategy is very simple. You bait out every set that you don't know. You get If they're playing the Brave version, you get rid of that very easily. And then you just simply go Baguska in defense, and that saves you two, you get three turns of Baguska in defense. The following turn, you go into Needle Fiber Selene Access Code, pop everything except for Mirror Jade. Wait one more turn for Baguska. Your turn will come around with zero material Baguska, and then you kill them. Time Star comes up because it searches time, uh, Magician Souls if you want to. It searches a uh, very cool trick. is Let's say you're, you're going second. You Pendulum Summon. Don't use Wisdom Mind's Effect. You just Pendulum Summon a bunch of monsters. You have no access to Tuners. This is going first or second. You use Wisdom Mind Effect. Time Star protects to send Tuning to the Graveyard. And now you have a free extender. And then Time Star searches Magician Souls. So you actually have like two, you actually have two free extenders from one card. So one rank four gives you two free extenders. Uh, and then right after that, if you're going second, you just slap Zeus on top. I also have Baguska in there because some boards just can't out Baguska in attack position. So you put Baguska in attack, clear everything, and then Zeus the board. Uh, this all comes up in scenarios. And then once you Zeus the board, you try and save an extender, like a Souls or like a Saber Normal Summon. Then you just summon a Migverte once the whole board is gone. So... That's the main deck. That's the extra deck. Uh, this is the side deck. Literally 15 hand traps. Okay. Three Nibiru. Three Ash. Three Valor. Two Ghost Spell. Three Crow. One Lancia. You play one Lancia because against Slender going first or any deck that Scythe doesn't care about, typically Lancia stops them. So against Slender going first, you just remove Scythe for Lancia. You have to respect every deck, even though I do think Flunder is absolute dog shit. You still, if you end up DP Scythe against Flunder, what's that really doing? So instead of Scythe, they just go Lancia, and they actually just can't play. Even if they summon M-Pen, you don't care, because all their cards that give them follow-up are in the graveyard now, and they actually have no play in the following turn. The deck is, does absolutely nothing when they're under Lancia. Uh, against Despia, the cards you side in are, are these. Against Flunder, you just side in these seven. Flunder is not, like, I'm not scared of Flunder whatsoever. You could be Flunder without drawing any hand trap. It doesn't matter. But they do have a really tough time to play hand trap. The only way they play around Valor is they hard draw uh, the quick play spell. And they just can't play around Ash or Lancia. So you just keep these. Uh, Ash is a god card in this format. Because every deck this format is basically ass. So Ash, you still play against uh, Despia. You just destroy the Banded Fusion with that. And these are the ones I play against uh, Despia. Uh, if they go Branded Opening, I understand. Oh, I have like two Ghost Spell. I understand that uh, Branded Opening, sometimes they could, uh, do it, they'll do it in the draw phase. But that's fine. If they were in drop phase, you just veil the Lubelion and they actually cry. It doesn't matter. And I understand Brandon lost last Ghost Spell, but it doesn't matter. I don't want to play called by because for other matchups, let's say random matchups, you just want to have Ghost Spell over the called by. Uh, when you when you don't have so many, like I understand called by is nice, but I'm actually never siding it going first. Uh, I don't want to play hand traps in my deck going first. I don't want to play anything that is not a pendulum card that does not let me combo. So I'd only be playing called by going second. And instead of that, I'd prefer the versatility to have at least 10 hand traps in every single matchup going second. At the very least uh so some matchups called by is just there to stop hand traps i don't want that i would prefer all the hand traps to be useful uh, in any way shape or form to get at least 10 of them against combo decks uh and so i prefer the versatility of all of them ghost spell and ash blossom also allow me to pendulum summon them so uh if i have happen to have a, a lot of different pen, uh, hand traps uh let's say some 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 hand traps actually side like all 15. uh some like scythe decks you side all 15 literally and then if you do that, you just save the extra Ash or Ghost Spell to Pen Summon. Treat that as a tuner. And one Needle Fiber is full combo in this deck. All right, so now you guys understand the side deck. I'll understand that. I'll show you guys the actual combo. I'm going to my decks all together, so I'm going to power shuffle it. The combo is very, very simple, okay? I'm going to show you guys a base combo. There's a combo where with just harmonizing, there's a combo with... Uh, I'll just show you guys a basic combo, okay? So, I mean, any hand does it. I can't stress this enough, okay? I'm just going to pick an average three like, an average three cards. Your whole deck gets to these, whether it be Joker, Wisdom, Dulce Alliance, Pen Call, Prosperity. doesn't matter. It doesn't even need the double R's on the scale. It doesn't even need Ultra in the scale. This is just an example. Okay, so you're going to scale two. 
then you're going to pendulum harmonize it. Okay, harmonizing effect. Now, if you, you're playing pendulum, you don't have three cards to play with. So let's say you start off with like Oath, Wisdom, Harm. Okay, let me give you an example. You start off with these three. So you go Oath, Wisdom, you put Iris in here, you pendulum the Wisdom and the Harmo. The Harmo effect will trigger, especially Oath Dragon from your extra deck. Okay, so you're going to want to, this is just a typical three card combo Harmo and then you have Harmo and Oath. And they're all, it's not like any, a generic three cards. This is basically any three cards in your deck uh, could, could get to this very simply. So this is the scenario. And then you're going to make Baron the floor with the harmonizing and the Oath Dragon. Always save your normal summon. In fact, sometimes, like half the time, you actually pendulum summon Joker. When you already have access to harmonizing, you pendulum Joker and don't normal it. For the reason being is Oath will add the Harmo here. And you'll normal summon the Harmo and link these into Needle Fiber. At this point, Needle Fiber effect will trigger let me make this a little clearer for you guys uh man also yo i just got lasik surgery so <laughs> i shouldn't be looking at screens but i want to make content for you guys so i don't i don't even care i'll take one for the team here we're going to go into artemis artemis is not going to put the tuning in the graveyard the only reason now artemis this is where artemis comes up as a combo piece now you special the tuning magician because you put it in the graveyard for free you banish the tuning magician and the Artemis, and you make Dagda. At this point, you just saved your Baron the Floor. So Baron the Floor will not trigger well, uh, right away on Rezo to pop the double Iris. You protect it from the Biru because Baron will just negate it. And then double Iris will trigger and Dagda will trigger. So that will set Artifact Scythe as well as searching Pengraft to your deck. Okay, so does, so far just three card combo, right? So you have this in scenarios where you don't open the uh, Harmo Oath. And you don't like you don't always need there's so many ways to do this combo, it's insane. It doesn't even matter because you could always just remake it with the TG Wonder Magician, Needle Fiber, Pop Scythe. No one plays Dark Rollers, you get to save for Needle Fiber. So TG Wonder Magician, Pop Scythe, Scythe, TG Wonder, McBaron. So it doesn't even matter how you get to, but the end board will always end on this. In this scenario, you already started this, so we're going to link off with the Needle Fiber. Here we're going to go into Verte, and Verte will make the DP. So with a three card combo, you end up with literally an unbreakable board here. You send Fusion Destiny, Celestial, and Dasher. And this ends up with a board of DPE, Scythe, Pengraph. Uh, DP, Scythe, Bear, and Pangraph. So there's really no answer to this, and it's just three card, a three-card combo. So now when you go on your opponent's turn, okay, you're also going to have random two cards. <laughs> that would make it even crazier, like if you had these for the combo, but uh, you're going to pass in the draw phase. You're, you're going to, well, to play around Super Poly, if you really want to, you could pop this, but it depends on the matchup. Uh, if it's blind at this scenario, I really want my Scythe to resolve, so I will be playing around it. And if he has Ghost Spell, I'm just gonna negate it with Baron. So I'm gonna pop the two of these. Sometimes under pen call, you could just DPE pop uh, like the card pen called and Verte, or you could Baron pop the Verte or something. This thing, I'll use these, I'll declare DPE. In a standby phase, I'll bring back the DPE. I'm gonna activate the DPE right away in the standby, popping both. Chain blocking, artifact size, chain link one, DPE, chain link two, because artifact size is mandatory. Scythe effect in the field, declare, and then effect negate. Now in this, typically you do have pen call as well, or like that those lines with a search pen call. Uh, or if not, you'd go in, you have a free rank four with that hand, and I would have gone time star and get more plus. The, uh, so with the full hand, I would have gone, if they even droplets the scythe, I just pen graph effect, uh, negate, uh, sorry, pen graph effect, pop his droplet, uh, pop my, my wood oaf, and then the second effect of pen graph will trigger because of time star, allowing me to send a free spell castle to the graveyard. So we'll send a free tuning mission to the graveyard, and then scythe, uh, send one card in the field. So we'll send scythe. Scythe is no longer in the field, so it negates it. In this scenario, I'm just showing you guys a typical three card combo, so we don't have that. But nonetheless, they're just not playing through this scythe trigger. And now we, we just did this with three cards, right? Perhaps the first two cards I used to bait your opponent, bait your opponent's hand traps. I could have started with pen call and he ashed it or something. Then we still end on this. Uh, now your turn, it looks like you have no follow up, right? Like you have no scales. The reason why this deck is so absolutely crazy is every card in your deck has a scale. Uh, you're going to, like, you get DPE back. You could dash her if you want. Dual lines. We already have scales, and that dual lines which is either, either pen call or double iris effect to draw two. So it's like even when it looks like you have no follow up, that's what DP does. It allows you to have the craziest follow up. So here we search dual lines. We get pen call, discard, oath, and then like this is just full combo. And I'm I'm uh, I'm doing sixteen thousand damage if I want to. So even when it looks like you have no follow up, the, the draw three, the one for turn, and the two for celestial dasher just obliterates your opponent. So that is my pure. Uh, well, I call it pure because I'm playing 30 magicians, but I know a bunch of virgins are going to be like, oh my god, bro, you're playing DP Scythe, it's not a pendulum deck, bro, you're playing DP Scythe deck, bro. Shut the hell up, all right? Literally, just shut the hell up. Uh, but that's the deck, guys. Absolutely amazing deck. I love it. And I'll probably be taking it to YCS Hartford as long as DP is not banned. The deck is playable without DP. You don't really need DP. Uh, I just enjoy that you're. it's such a good fallback going second uh, to make Verte or going first as, as a fallback through interruptions. You don't always need to DP Scythe Thumb. Scythe, however, is mandatory in this deck. 
If you don't want to play DP, you don't need to. You just play double Needle Fiber and you play Tornado Dragon. So your way to pop it now would be a Tornado Dragon to pop the Scythe, which is very easy. Or you play double Needle Fiber and you just keep the Needle Fiber in the field. The Needle Fiber will go TG Wonder to pop the Scythe and you still make Baron. And because Dark Blue is not in this format, uh, you can still easily resolve your Needle Fiber. So they're both versions are cool. Uh, and it's very fair if you don't want to play DP because uh, I literally side DP uh, going second against Despia because I'm aware that literally just drawing any generic, any five pendulum cards in your deck, these are, are there any six? Because you draw six return. Like this destroys Despia. I can't stress this enough. This like obliterates Despia. I will nine, like not even nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, I'm breaking any Despia board with this. As long as they don't open dimensional barrier, they're losing. So any six cards does, does the exact same thing. This one destroys them. This one, I don't even need to look at this one and this one destroys them. Literally every single, and all my good cards are in the field. And this still destroys them. Every combination of six cards, just, well, these are getting sided out. Any car combination of six destroys them, no matter what it is. There's just no answer. You literally just pendulum five. And what are they going to do? They only have spot removal. Uh, the bad matchup for this deck is Prank Kids because this deck does lose to double Regeki. Uh, but I do think Prank Kids is falling out of favor because it hard loses to Despia. It literally just cannot beat Despia. And uh, so I do think that the, this is an amazing meta call because you're going to face a lot of Despia and Despia counters, and this deck destroys every Despia counter. Like it obliterates Sword Soul, which is a huge Despia counter, and it is overall destroys Trap decks, which is another Despia counter, and it just destroys Despia. So, this is just an amazing meta call this format uh, to destroy everything. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Smash the subscribe button. Let's get this video to 1500 likes, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.